Well, we are going to do the long-promised review of the movie Woodlawn. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. Well, Sunday night we went to uh, see the movie, and I was expecting there to be uh, a big crowd. I thought they would be, with it being a Sunday night, that the crowd would be maybe not packed, but a, a large crowd. But little do I know, uh, it was just, uh, well, it was a small crowd. Not, not, I've been to movies that had less people. Uh, there were several couples there, but um, not the crowd that I expected, even though that, that didn't disappoint me because I know that the big numbers come on Saturday, Friday and Saturday. So, uh, wasn't disappointed in that part, uh, and it, I wasn't disappointed at all in, in, in any part, really, because um, I'm going to give it a thumbs up before we even start. Uh, <laughs> do you get a thumbs up? Okay, so we get two thumbs up. Uh, but let's talk about the movie. Uh, segregation of schools back in the 70s is something that you or I can't relate to. Uh, we, we heard about it on, on television, but uh, where we live, uh, there was no such thing as segregation. And so um, that's what the basis of this movie was about and it was I always love it when I'm filming one of these and I get a notification of something that really is irrelevant to the the topic so that's why we both kind of just looked like oh, <laughs> what was that um, well first of all the movie was a pure flicks movie and we enjoy those, don't we? We do. We've seen several of them together now. Uh, and it's always fun to see the names of people that we know uh, on the screen. We Was it a... Oh, it was during the previews that we saw David A. David, uh, yeah. And then as the, the film started, we seen it. It said it was a Kevin Downs movie. And so uh, that's kind of fun, isn't it? It, it, it is. It makes it personal because you've gotten to interview. And you've gotten to listen to those interviews yeah. and feel like you're a part of that as well. Right. And, and this comes on the heels of um, the movie, what did we see the last time? Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of Our Fathers, when Kevin Downs and David A.R. White were the two basic stars of the right. movie. and Which was an amazing movie. And I believe it is now out on video. But there were some things about Woodlawn that I, I don't want to give a review and say, here's what happened and here's what happened and here's what happened. I, I want to look at, at some of the the issues in the movie and one of the big issues to me was the fact that a school well no let's start it down farther a football team a school and a community come together because of prayer Have you ever seen anything like that? It, it, no. I've never even seen hardly on an extended period of time a church that would, not a, a church, but a group of churches come together because of the prayers of, was starting to, the prayers of just a few people. Right. Uh, the basically minus a handful of players 
the entire team gave their lives to Christ. Yep. Wasn't that awesome? It, it was awesome. And to sit there and watch it, knowing that it's a true story, made a huge impact on me. I mean, sitting and watching a movie and it not being a true story is good. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it was a true story and true events and that those events actually took place made a world of difference to me. I mean, that that really was impressive, knowing that these kids actually, actually did this. Now, before I went to see the movie, I didn't realize that two of the main characters were actual well-known football stars. Uh, if you followed football in the 70s, uh, Jeff Rutledge was a, a quarterback at the University of Alabama. Tony Nathan was a running back at the University of Alabama. Uh, they both went on to pro careers. Tony Nathan, I know, played about 10 years with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, can't quite think right now who Rutledge played for. Uh, I ain't even going to say, even though I got something running through my mind, because I might be wrong, and I don't like being wrong. No kidding. <laughs> but Not uh, a truer statement made. Um, okay, so I think it was the New York Giants, but I don't know that for sure. We'll have to Google that. Yeah, well, I tell you what, if you watch this, send me an email at ed at edboston.com and tell me if I was right or wrong about who Jeff Rutledge played for. I won't be upset because I'm not sure on it. I could Google it like she said. and But, but we hope he's right. But we're also in the middle of doing this video, so I don't want to stop and hit Google. Um... But well-known football players, and again, it's a, a true story. Right. I didn't know. I've watched pro football my <clears throat> entire life that I can remember. I remember when those two people played. I don't remember that story. And, you know, touchdown Tony Nathan uh, was uh, a black running back who um, at first – just about wasn't even going to be given a chance because he was a black running back. Jeff Rutledge was the golden child, basically. You know, big, tall, white, athletic, pro-type quarterback. You know, best, for sure the best in the state, and I'm sure many people thought the best in the whole country. Um... The, one of the interesting parts was the way the chaplain got involved. And he, um, he kind of got booted out the first day. <laughs> Coach uh, didn't want anything to do with the chaplain uh, addressing his football team. Uh, and then when he finally did agree to let him in, it was... What do you tell him? You got five minutes. You got five minutes. And 55 minutes later, wasn't it? <laughs> yep. He was still going strong. And um, the, the really cool thing was that both black and white students joined him down where he was talking. Uh as if it didn't matter anymore what color people were. And I don't know about you, but during the movie, it almost seems like in some cases we can learn a lot from what went on at that point in oh, time yeah. still today. Absolutely. Um, so many people, and it's not just one race or the other, but so many people judge people by what their race is instead of by what kind of a person they are. And 
that's no more acceptable in 2015 than it was in, what, 72? Right. And you've seen that uh, people took pot shots at Tony Nathan because he was black, tried to injure him because he was black, and and many times it was encouraged. So we get a le we do get a good civics lesson in the movie because it was that way in the seventies, the early seventies more so. Um, but again, that that's something that we we can't we can't relate to segregation, but we also can't relate a whole lot to um, racial issues because we live in a mostly white community. Uh, there are, but there was a difference in in area. Mm -hmm. They were down south; we were farther north. Right. Their governor stood in the doorway of the University of Alabama and said, no blacks are right. going to enter. Uh, and that was part of, of the story. Uh, I also enjoyed the part uh, John Voigt played Bear Bryant. And I thought he was kind of a key figure in the movie. Um, it showed where, for the first time, Alabama played a team that had black players on it. USC came to Birmingham, Alabama to, or is that, I know the, um, the high schools were in Birmingham. I'm trying to think of where the University of Alabama is. I'm thinking Tuscaloosa, but it doesn't matter. Um, first time ever, and it showed Bear Bryant after they lost to USC. And if you know anything about football, you know Bear Bryant hated to lose just as much as anybody in the world. And he went over into the USC locker room and congratulated them on being a class act. And he went up to one of the black football players that was basically the star of the game and told him how impressed he was with him and that he was the real deal. And so Bear Bryant plays a big role. And again, this is, to me, a reason for people who have been around sports and know Bear Bryant, know Jeff Rutledge, know Tony Nathan, know those names, remember them when they played, you're going to go find out about some things that you didn't know about him. I mean, none of, well, Bear Bryant was a legend. Uh, Rutledge and Tony Nathan professionally were good football players, but I don't think either one of them are in the Hall of Fame. I'm relatively sure they're not. Uh, but they were above average players. They weren't just, you know, Right. The last man on the bench. And so we we get the community together and we get the coach on board. The coach gives his life to Christ by going to a black church that Tony well, Nathan right. attended and asking to be baptized. Yeah. Uh, th that's a big deal in the 70s to go into a black church and ask a black pastor to baptize you. Yep. And that was a very touching part of the movie. It was good. Um, the way they unified around the phrase one way. one way and yeah the finger went out didn't it mm -hmm. and you can see that on on the poster i think one way and you know a lot of it was raised up high um, they wrote it on the back of their helmets they did uh, 
and it unified everybody and nobody seemed to get upset about the saying that there was one, one way now the, there was some people that got upset about guess what prayer the fact that they prayed on the field right you would think let's see 1972 to 2015 oh what is that 40 some years i think we're old and we're still having the same issue today there's a coach right now <laughs> that is in, that is in trouble because yep. he goes to the center of the field and prays asks no one to join him right but people do and that's after the game and it's may be going to cost him his job right go back to the movie and the coach of Woodlawn is told to quit praying. Right. If not, it will cost him his job. And they never did really say whether he got fired or well, no, if, but or in if he just. In scene, it shows him selling insurance. Yeah. So. He definitely was not coaching. Right. So the assumption is that he got fired for allowing them to continue to to pray and not stopping it. Well, th when they had the largest gathering of any high school football team, he said, let's make a bold statement. Glad you remembered that. That was impressive to me. I can relate, being from Indiana, that when there was a high school basketball player by the name of Damon Bailey was recruited by Indiana University when he was in the eighth grade. Wow. And from that point forward, they sold every gym out they went to. When they made it to the state finals, instead of having it in Market Square Arena back then, they actually moved it over to the Hoosier Dome so that they could hold about 40,000 people for a high school basketball game. Wow. Flashback to the movie when Tony Nathan's team played Jeff Rutledge's team. They put it in a 40,000 attendance stadium, sold it out, turned 20,000 people away, and so the place is jam-packed. They show the lady sing the national anthem. And the microphone is still out on the field. And that's when the coach goes out and he calls the chaplain out and says um, that he wants him to say a prayer. And then they call the coach to the other team out who... That's another subplot. <laughs> they were always bitter rivals and basically enemies. Enemies, right. Uh, became close because of their Christian faith and uh, decided to jointly endorse the chaplain praying in front of this crowd of 40,000 people, which he did. And then all over the place you started seeing the the one-way symbol go up and then had a well, football game. But remember, they were saying the Lord's Prayer over the intercom and the, what was he, mayor? S school superintendent. School superintendent went through and unplugged the intercom system for the entire arena mm -hmm. and... So this, this, the prayer automatically stopped because the sound stopped. The 40,000 fans continued the prayer. That was one of those cold chill moments. It was a cold chill moment. Because the actor playing the chaplain, you could no longer hear his voice. Right. But 
But that didn't stop 40,000 other people from continuing to pray. And th this movie, to me, is just full of lessons. Oh, it was. Just Definitely. full full of... There's no reason to have so many divisions, and we talk about that in today's society. There's no reason to not stand up for your beliefs. There's no reason to take up, not take up for your fellow man. And once those kids gave their lives to Christ, it didn't matter, black or white, if somebody did something wrong to the other one, there was their, I mean, their teammate was right there helping them up, right. pushing the other guy away. And, you know, so many lessons all through this movie. Well, the football camp that year before the big game conjoined camps and had their football camps together. Uh, Tony Nathan's team ended up converting the other team for them to give their hearts to God too. And to be, and they did their camps together. They were not rivals at that point. They were brothers. And that that's just not heard of in sports. Right. Uh, we live in a town that has two high schools. Birmingham had ser has several. We have two. Now, in Birmingham, Woodlawn and Jeff Rutledge's high school, which I don't remember the name of, and it's not relevant, really. You'll see it if you go see the, the movie. They were the it Jets. It was Woodlawn. No, Woodlawn was Tony Nathan's. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it was. Uh, it was the something Jets, and it again, it doesn't matter. Right. But... They were bitter rivals. And for them to um, come together and do their summer training camp together, that, that's just not heard of. In Columbus, where we live, the better school, I mean, the one school... Watch on, it now. ...on the east side of town is where I went to school, Columbus East. The other school... The best school. On the north side of town, Columbus North. Back when we went to school, there is no way in God's green earth that they would have gotten together mm -mm. and done summer camp together. I don't think they would today. Well, it's a little different today because... The school districting is different. You can kind no, of that's true. you can kind of pick which school you go right. to, and so instead of all your neighbors being your teammates, uh, you might pick Columbus East, which you would never do, and I might pick Columbus North, which I would never do, and so we'd be best friends because we live next door to each other. Or in this case, because we're married. <laughs> and he would pick Columbus North just because of that. Uh, and so it, it's just, <laughs> it's a little different today. But it was an amazing, there was just so many different things that you kind of just say, wow, this is a true story. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are some things that, you know, maybe... The directors and all added a little to or subtracted a little from to make it, you know. Well, after that many years, up. you have trouble remembering it all. But, but, I mean, if they didn't come close to getting it accurate, there's too many people that would know, right? And, and out them, and it being a Christian movie, you know, people would want to out them if they didn't have they, have right. it accurate, right? So, um, it's a fun movie. It's a sports movie for those that like. But if you don't like sports, there's plenty of um, just good morals. When we left, I heard there was a black, a younger black couple with an older white couple. And they were walking out the door in front of us. And I heard the older white lady talking about 
how we people in the north knew that that kind of stuff went on, but we couldn't relate to it because it didn't happen around here. And I just thought it was interesting that it was kind of like a, a history lesson. And, you know, that couple was older than we were. Right. And, and so... Um, I was glad to see that there were three or four probably high school age couples that were like on a group date mm -hmm. that were there. And I liked that. I thought that was pretty good. So, again, we give it two thumbs up. <laughs> and we still want to let you know that one way is the only way. And there's some things from the movie I, I want to integrate into my ministry. And um, you'll be hearing more about Woodlawn, no doubt about it. Anything it's you want to add? Good movie. Good movie. Go see it. Support it with your money. Support it by sharing. And go out and do the right thing.